Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well, welcome to another video. It is Wednesday morning and it's been a few days since I talked about Brian Koberger and this is an interesting little segment from Banfield last night on News Nation. Ashley is back with more of her unnamed sources but actually this one I do believe. The reason I believe it is because a professor has been named and there is an incredibly specific timeline of what allegedly happened during the very first semester of his studies at WSU. Brian was employed as a teaching assistant whilst he was doing his PhD studies. And from the WSU website, it can be gleaned, and I've talked about this in previous videos, that you can get a fee waiver if you work as a teaching assistant. Now, I don't know whether that's a full fee waiver. I don't know what the specifics are, but that's what WSU publicizes. But Brian didn't do very well. This has allegedly come from three sources. And I think this has to come from sources within WSU, specifically those who had detailed knowledge about Brian Koberger. WSU didn't comment when News Nation contacted them. Koberger was misogynistic and he would grade female students differently than male students. He had a sexist attitude and he was hauled over the coals for his behaviour, for his unprofessionalism. And ultimately, he was fired. So let's run down the semester that Brian Koberger spent at WSU. According to the sources detailed by Banfield, his alleged job termination timeline began on September 23rd. So he would have started there at WSU in August when the semester started, when studies started. So he's not even two months into this job. On September 23rd, he had an altercation with a professor. Now, Professor Snyder has been named. It seems that Professor Snyder was dealing with this uh, nonsense from Koberger. A few days later, on October the 3rd, there was a meeting to discuss professional behaviour. So this would have been regarding the sexism, the misogynistic way that he was treating female students. On October 21st, he received an email about the failure to meet expectations. As someone who's worked in academia for a long time, of course, this is going to be addressed. <laughs> you can't have teaching assistants or anybody on the staff at a university unfairly grading some students simply because they are female, whereas he had a completely different attitude towards the male students. On November the 2nd, he was brought in for another meeting to discuss an improvement plan. So he was given chances, chance after chance by the seams of things, you know, October, meeting to discuss professional behaviour. So that would have been his first warning. Then he received an email about the failure to meet expectations, which is another warning. November the 2nd, they're now starting to implement chances that Koberger could use to improve. So he was put on an improvement plan. Now, we don't know the details of that improvement plan, but I would imagine it would be stop being sexist. We heard when Koberger's name first hit the headlines when he was arrested. We heard from a number of students. I made videos about what students had said. There was one student who said that a professor put together a session where students could fire questions and complaints at Brian. It also came to light that he was a harsh marker, but after the murders, he completely relaxed and he was just giving everybody 100%. So he'd just given up. Why had he given up? Well, we said maybe it was because he was relaxed, because he'd committed a quadruple homicide. 
and it changed his outlook on life, made him happier. But perhaps it was because he was on an improvement plan. He wasn't happy about it, so he just decided to be dead positive to everybody, give everybody 100% so no one would complain about him. So then that's November 2nd. Just 11 days later, the murders happen, which Brian has been accused of and charged for. He's awaiting his preliminary hearing, which happens at the end of June. Then we jump forward a month to December the 7th. He was brought in for a meeting to discuss how his improvement plan was going. Clearly, it wasn't going very well because just two days after that meeting, there was a second altercation with the professor. Now, we don't know if this was the same professor that he had the first altercation with, the professor that had put him on the improvement plan, or a different professor. We don't know how many professors he was arguing with. That didn't go too well because 10 days after that, he was officially terminated. So he would have received his termination letter or email. Presumably it would have been in writing when he was at his parents in Pennsylvania. Just in time for Christmas, he was not going back after Christmas. He was not going to go back. Now, when those two police stops happened, as him and his dad were travelling east, they set off on December 13th. They were stopped twice in Indiana by cops on December 15th. And allegedly, Brian's dad was all happy about his son being a PhD student. Maybe what his dad didn't know was that Brian wasn't doing very well. He was just about to be fired. Four days after those traffic stops in Indiana, he was officially terminated. He was not going back to WSU for the spring semester. I would assume that anyway, because if his teaching assistant contract had been terminated, where did that leave his PhD studies? Presumably, they wouldn't have wanted him back with a sexist attitude, having altercations with professors. I would expect that termination to be across the board. You're not coming back. Goodbye. See you later. Anyway, let me know what you think. I think this is really interesting. I really do. Really interesting. More details about the mind of alleged quadruple murderer, Brian Korberger. I've been Michelle. Hope you're well. I'll see you in the next video. It's goodbye from Miss Tillington and Miss Cassie Springer. Bye, guys.